Hey everyone, Brian from WorkshopAddict.com and today we're going to take a look at Milwaukee's ratcheting wrenches. These come in 7-piece and 15-piece kits. We have two 15-piece kits in front of us. We'll put the model numbers in the description. These come in trays already and if you already have Milwaukee combination wrenches, you have these same trays or similar trays in your toolbox. Now if you want to keep your metric in the same drawer in standard in another drawer like I do, Milwaukee reverse these around so you can throw these each in the same drawer and they will match up and have a nice fit. That's awesome. That was something I was hoping that they do because I don't keep metric and standard in the same drawer. It just makes a mess. These are perfect in the tray. Now next, these are all made similar to the other combination wrenches. You have your max bite on the open end. You have a nice I-beam in the middle. You have ink filled markings and they also have a marking on the ratcheting end that gives you a little arrow. When you're looking at that, that's the reverse side. That's a nice lean thing that you can just throw up and say, yep, in reverse, you don't have to continue to test these. Since they are straight, to switch directions, you just flip them around. We have a ton of ratcheting wrenches here, way too many, and we pick them up. You're always using a different brand, and this little marking will help us immensely. Now you have what Milwaukee calls a two and a half degree arc swing. It means there's a double stack set of paws in there, and you have 144 ratcheting positions. Now we tested this out against some of the other ratchet wrenches that we have in 13 millimeter, just to see exactly how it was going to compare. It seemed to do very similar to almost all of the other ratchet wrenches that we have here, and that's taking into consideration the amount of slop that it might have on that particular bolt and its position as it turns and where it catches the next paw. So not bad there. I kind of uh, might be a little fussy on that one, but they performed well. Now these are straight and we have a couple here and I'm going to show you a comparison of the same thing when we get one that has a 15 degree angle on it. Straight's going to you know, get you into some tight positions, but you need to have room around it to be able to get your hand in. Sometimes in body areas, when you're working on the body of a car, you need just a bit of an angle so you can get your hand around it. I use both all the time. I use reversing ones, I'll use the straight ones. It all depends on the situation. So if you buy these and you do a lot of work on flat areas, you'll find that other bolts might get in the way or that you won't have a lot of room to put your hand in there or you'll be putting it a little bit sideways on your bolt or nut. That's not what you want to do. But either way, I have a feeling sometime in the near future, you're going to see some reversing ratcheting wrenches come out from Milwaukee. Could be wrong, just a gut feeling. So if you're looking at these, know that's how you're going to use them. There are benefits and negatives to both. Now, as you all know, ratcheting wrenches are not meant to be used for breaking loose very tight bolts, but we put a lot of cheese on these trying to test out a little bit of, you know, their strengths. I mean, at some point you're using a tool for not what it's meant to be doing. And if it breaks, give me a break. But in this case, we were installing a bumper on a truck. We were using them to tighten up some bolts fairly tight and everything worked fine. Using these, they felt comfortable in your hands, and if you're used to the normal Milwaukee combination wrench, you'll really like it. They are a nice chrome finish that cleans up well, and they don't take pictures well in our shop. Flat out, it's too bright in here, and I apologize for that. But if you're using them, you'll like them. I think the max bite area on the wrench is something that I've had to get used to. And if you watched our first review on this, we were kind of 50-50 because the amount of grip that you get on a bolt on this is, it's immense. You get a ton. And when you're pulling on the bolt, it can actually hold the bolt or not. And it makes it hard to slide the wrench off. It's something that you have to get used to. Uh, but at the same point, in certain situations when you are using them, it will stop you from having that fear of sliding off the bolt or nut and you know, just ripping your knuckles to pieces on something else. So that is something that I've learned to like. I still have some smooth wrenches around here for doing small jobs where I need the speed, especially in the smaller sizes, but either way, I like it. What I started to do in using these is just 
test some sizing. And I started to get some inconsistencies and I'm not gonna say, you know, one way or another what's going on here, but I'm just gonna show you what I seen. So this started out on a 10 millimeter bolt where I was looking at it and I thought, okay, what's going on here? And it just felt a little more loose than normal. So if I get in here on this one, I get a 10 point, 10.18 moving it around so I know it's there. Hopefully you can see that. But if I go over to, let me pull out a Sonic, I get a 10.13. If I pull out an old made in the USA Craftsman, Ten point one three one two. If I pull out the standard Milwaukee non ratcheting, I get a ten point one five. So this is definitely not as tight. It makes me wonder did they change something? I, you know, to make because of the max grip. So then I, I went to 13 millimeter and pulled out the ratcheting one. And I'm getting a 13.1, that was 1.7 that I slipped out. 13.1, let's go 13.17. I'm bouncing around when I move it around. 13.17 average, go to my Sonic, and here I just got to get it right, I get a 13.17, this one's been used heavily, and it makes me wonder, I go to my Craftsman, I get a 13.10, go to a gear wrench, 13.14, go back to the original Milwaukee, I get a 13.11, one, two. So it makes me wonder what, did they loosen some of them up? This one, 13.19 on the ratcheting. Did they loosen something up for the max bite because people were complaining they were too tight? I don't know, um, but they, there's definitely a difference on the open end and it does seem a little bit more loose. So hit me up in the comments. Am I being a little too picky? Am I asking too much? Is seven hundredths of a millimeter worth talking about? The reason that I got the calipers out is because I noticed the difference when I was on a 10 millimeter bolt in the Jeep. It just, it seemed like it was loose. Now, all bolts are different, especially you get into some of the more, the cheaper bolts, they're, they're all over the board. So, is it a big deal? I want you guys to tell me a little bit if I'm being a little bit too fussy on this. I really like the tolerances on the first set. On here, they feel a little bit more loose. I'm hoping it's not just the set that I have because that would mean then manufacturing process is different, but it makes me wonder why the ratcheting set is different than the normal combination set. So either way, I still like how these work. The ratcheting side seems perfect for me. I measured it up against some of the other ones, it all matches up. Uh, I just, I think that these seem to be good solid wrenches that can take a beating. I like that they have a storage area that fits in with their normal combination wrench kit. I like the fit, I like the feel, the thickness of them as you put them in compares to other ratcheting wrench styles and the, all the feel, all the power, everything that's there compared to everything else that we have from high end to low end fits well in here. I just have a little bit of issue with the open size, but that's not to say that they won't be perfect or well used. This max bite end, I'm telling you, has some, if you wanna hang on to something, especially a larger bolt, you can. Now, people in the last video have asked us, does it mar up your bolt? We've used it on a lot of chrome bolts, and we've used it in different places, and the only ones that we've seen it leave marks on is brass. Occasionally, if we get an older chrome bolt, 
or not. Maybe it'll leave a small mark on there, but they're actually really well at taking care of the bolts and not leaving marks, but giving you good grip. So if you're out looking for a new set of ratchet wrenches and you like the way these come across, man, I think this is still a good buy. I'm gonna do some more research on what's going on if they did loosen up the tolerances on the Max Bite and try to get back with you. Hey, I appreciate your comments on this. I'm really interested in what you guys have to say. Maybe we can get a giveaway from some of these going on in the future. A little hint there. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.